Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm responsible for um, Consort OS system software. And um, uh, today I'm going to talk about my favorite technology, the, um, the stretch cluster. So, the so customer's pain point. So, so customer have, they want to no, overhead, reduce, reduce overhead and uh, variable. And um, because of variable, they want to you know, uh, minimize downtime so they can have, you know, minimize the uh, loss of revenue. And um, then they want to provide data production you know, and then, um, without paying for an either array. And then convince auditor that you have you know, additional copy you know, in case of local event. So this is a, a, a violin solution for those uh, needs. So um, by, uh, by stress cluster, we, we provide seamless variable and, um, um, and um, uh, the uh, distance wise, the, uh, we can go across city and um, also uh, the, uh, the based on the mirroring, so we can, you can, uh, meet, you can mirror, um, you can replicate data synchronously to the, um, between two sites. And um, you can manage from one simple interface. Uh, you just you guys just uh, take a look at Symfony. So by Symfony, you can manage stretch cluster. So uh, this is um, typical deployment of stretch cluster. So basically, um, yeah, this controller is seven seven hundred, and uh, this shelf array is uh, seven two hundred. So um, as you can see, um, uh, this. Let's say this is site A and site B, and also in two different data center, and um, uh, and then they each one has can have um, their own uh, workload. So site A has its own application servers, and uh, site B also can have their own application servers. So which means the site B's controller just not staying uh, no staying idle. It just can serve still can serve one workload, and also. As you can see, uh, you, know, you can add um, more shelf to the um, controller, so it provides scalability too. So, so it's not simply providing only the, uh, you know, the uh, more data protection, but of course it can also you know, provide um, the scale up you know, you know, configuration. So, and based, it's based on FG, and so let me give you some, I you know, give you um, example. So uh, let's say our application now uh, send down the I/O like write and read, then it will get to the, uh, the controller, and then it will be a mirror between sites. So this controller is in responsible for uh, the uh, duplicate I/O and the sender to the remote and uh, local, and then uh, once the uh, even when 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 the remote also finishes writing, then it can act to the application server. So it makes sure always the uh, the data is 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 uh, copy two copies in a uh, local site and a remote site. And um, <coughs> and um, also uh, we have a tiebreaker. So tiebreaker is sitting in a third site, like I can say like site C. So in case site A and B loss of a connection between like uh, IP and a uh, fiber channel, now the tiebreaker come, comes in and then they can, you can solve the, uh, the kind of the uh, split brain uh, fatal scenario. So, how, how does it do that? How does it communicate with the controllers? So we have uh, IP mm. and um, we have Viber channel. So they, um, you know, they communicate with the, uh, this, um, this uh, ISA, we call it ISA, so they have, a, they can use a <coughs> long Viber channel cable, dark cable, or they can have um, the special you know, FC gateway between sites. So, yeah. I, I mean, for the tie for the tiebreaker or the witness. Oh, the tie oh, tiebreaker. Ah, oh, yeah. This simply is just the uh, no, IP network. IP network. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Since it's in in the third site, so I mean, well, this the. Um, yeah. What is what is the tiebreaker? Is it so? It's yeah, a you know, it's, server? so basically it's variable. Um, it's this control A and B is up here, so they monitor each other. So yeah. So they are using this IP network or the fiber channel column disk, but it, once they are lost. They, when, when they lose their connectivity with you know, this IP and uh, this quantum disk both, then the tiebreaker comes in and 
and then it it solve the uh, no, this kind of so it let let no let them know the uh, which one has to take control. What is the tiebreaker? Is it just a piece of software that runs in yeah. Symphony? Yeah, yeah it is software, piece of software. Yes. So okay. yeah. Yeah, so the yeah, tiebreaker is like just a piece of software which is running on an external server. Mm -hmm. And what it basically is, it's trying to do is like trying to avoid the split brain scenario. Yep. And basically determining that who is the master for Yeah, I'm just trying to find out. So it, it can run in a VM, I can put it wherever yeah, I yeah, like, yeah, I could yeah. run it in the yeah, cloud yeah. somewhere. So you can run in a physical yeah. server, you can run a VM, so you, everything is possible. Okay. Yeah. Are there any latency requirements between the tiebreaker and the end nodes? Um, don't think so, yeah. Between tiebreaker and uh, this site, I don't think so, yeah. yeah. I guess it needs to be at a third site, though, does it, tiebreaker? I'm sorry, what is that? It needs to be at a third site. It can't be at site A or B. Yeah, yeah, it has to From be at a third site, yeah. Like, I can say, like, site C, right? So. Is, that, is there a tiebreaker AWS instance? Uh, AWS instance, no, there's no AWS. AWS. No, not today. <laughs> okay. If it's just That's software, you could something you could it's do. It's an ideal third site. Yeah, it could be. It could you be. Know, it whoever could be whoever is running and has internet access. It's, it's a very light piece of software. It just you know responses to the servers, and then if I out if I can't get there anymore, then I'm the one who should be dying at this stage, <laughs> shutting but, myself down. But yeah. does it require a dedicated server that I need to install and manage? No, it's just, no, just it can do it in a VM. So you could yeah. run it anywhere in a VM as long as you have IP connectivity to it. That's yeah. the most important. Under what operating systems? Linux. Linux. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I could spin up a Linux instance in yeah. Azure or yeah. something. So if you want to put in AWS, you could. We've not seen anybody do it, but that could be a tiebreaker site. Sure. So you can have a RPM or a VPN package of a VM. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are elephant hunters. Those people have three sites. When you start getting smaller and I only have two, <laughs> right. then it makes That's sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So. Okay, just before, okay. I was hoping you might ask. Um, so if I do do a failover, how do, do I, my app, it's, is it seamless to my applications? Presumably it is. Is it the same fiber channel target? So I'm assuming that these would have different worldwide names. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it is different uh, no, targets. Or my, so is my application configured in a highly available multipath to both sites over fiber channel? No, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So um, basically, um, the controllers are responsible for uh, yeah, no, these, uh, that duplicate data. So the, uh, the app site, on the site A, the application server need to know only the control A. You don't have okay, to so know the control B, yeah. Right, so in a, in a failover scenario, do the worldwide names move across? Yeah, 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 so yeah. we use the uh, NPIV protocol to kind of uh, move the WDPNs to the other okay. side. So, okay, so use NPIV to... Transparent to the client. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. so I need hosts that support NPIV. Yeah. Okay. Just to check, what's the maximum acceptable latency between the two primary nodes, or the primary nodes on each So uh, I think that depends on the applications. If, like, no, I think, let's say, the no, database having higher workload and, like, no, many transactions then. Yeah, no, it's yeah. typically, we're trying to get it a millisecond or not more, right? Because obviously when you have to act at both sides before you go to the back, uh, to the, yeah. prime, the app back, I mean, mm -hmm. you could do it over 100 kilometers or 200, but the app will slow down dramatically. So we sit down, we usually with customers, we kind of look at the <coughs> layout, you have to have fiber, we do latency checks, and then we kind of tell them what is, what is feasible. Whatever is so acceptable our, to them is acceptable to you. There's yeah. no impact to you. And then we give them recommendations too, right? We have a couple... We have three use cases just here, but we've deployed this actually quite a bit in a few customers. So we, we actually tell them this is what other customers do and how it works and behaves for those customers. So are, are, are you seeing it more in a campus environment or in Wall Street to Jersey City? Yeah, so the, the dominant models are either campuses. So there's a couple here with big campuses that are using it for their development environments. We see it financial, so New Jersey, Manhattan type of architectures. Yeah, because you can get that down to yeah. about two and a half milliseconds. Yeah, those are kind of the use locations, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which you know, I was just about to talk about it. So um, we have three. Uh, I have three new use cases. So uh, the um, industry building system provider, they use is for um, um, the building to building failover. So and then uh, uh, one of the advantages of this uh, stretch clause is they can access you no, know, you know, the both uh, controller can serve the uh, workload. So um, they can utilize the uh, so this the uh, this one of the controller sitting either. It's not it's not that case. So both controls of the I.O. and then both sites. So they basically they can utilize you know, maximum. And then uh, 
So Hoban, I think out of time, maybe you can focus on the first one, the leading systems provider use case, and then because we're kind of running short on time. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this, I just talk about it. So, um, so the, uh, in this case, they have um, one you know, site, let's say a site, site TS, dev, dev site, and then site B is on uh, the build engineer site. So they're both working together, and then when, when they need it, they, they move data between sites, and then so, you know, with uh, more data protection, protection with you know, such cluster, you know, available, supported. So, yeah. 